Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind Game of the Year Edition. In our last video, we completed the character creation process. Oh my, oh my, did we complete that. And now it is time to continue with the tutorial by heading through this door. Hmm. You should learn how to do combat. Pick up the dagger on the table by activating it with E. This must be the dagger in question. There is a note to Hriskar here, though. Hriskar, don't think I've forgotten our wager. I want this dagger sharp as a scamp's claw by morning. Ganseel, or Ganseely, I don't know. Well, I'm not really interested in taking that note, so we'll just leave it there. But I will take the Iron Dagger. Equip the dagger by dropping it on your picture in the inventory menu. So there it is. Let's go ahead and equip it. Press F to pull out your weapon. Once your weapon is readied, hold and release the left mouse button to swing it. The harder you swing it, the more damage it does but the more fatigue you will drain. Let's, uh, let's practice that. I'm gonna go third person here and press F. And Fetter has his iron dagger. I'm holding down the left mouse button right now. I guess he's uh, doing Tai Chi, I don't know. And if I let go, jab. Interesting. If you look down in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the fatigue bar, which is green. I'm just gonna click a whole bunch right now. Click, 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 click. You can see that this is very slowly draining his fatigue. I guess he uh, has a pretty strong right arm there and can continue doing this the cows come home. Good for him. I would probably already be exhausted. Um, let's look at something else, though. Now, you see how it says chop, slash, and thrust. Those are the different kinds of attacks that one can perform with this particular weapon. Both the chop and the slash have a damage range of 4 to 5 meaning that on any given chop or slash, you might do as little as four points of damage or as much as five points of damage. The thrust, on the other hand, has a damage range of five to five, so you will always do five points of damage with that one. That's only a difference of one point, so who cares, right? Well, it does matter, especially with other weapons later in the game, and it demonstrates that one type of attack is clearly better than the others. When I was setting things up, I turned this option on, always use best attack. Now you can probably guess where this is going, but in this particular instance, what that says is, hey, I don't care what's going on, always use thrust because that is the best attack for the iron dagger. So that's why we're just seeing, ah, uh, Escape does not get out of the uh, inventory menu, it just brings up this. I'll have to get used to that. Um, I, I keep clicking and it's just, he just constantly uses a thrust attack. There are others. Let's take a look at them. We're never going to see these again because there is no reason to. So I've turned off use best attack. Did you see that? That was overhand. So if I hold down the mouse... Ooh, that's weird, but uh, in any case. So now we've got an overhand attack. And I would say that is, uh, that's probably chop. So when he's holding still, he will chop. When he is moving forward or backward, he will thrust. And if he is strafing, 
he will slash. But the, uh, the chop and the slash have the potential to do less damage than the thrust. And therefore, forget about them. So that's what's going on there. Now let's put the iron dagger away. I'm gonna go back into first person mode so we can see things a little better. What do we have here? Crab meat and a bunch of question marks. Well, let's take the crab meat. You can eat ingredients by equipping them on your character in the inventory menu. Ingredients have different properties. Some may hurt you and some may help. Hmm. Well, that was kind of a nudge to go ahead and eat this crab meat, so let's do that. Crab meat has no effect on you. Okay. Whatever. What do we have here? Flynn. That's valuable. See the value 100 compared to like this cup, which is 13. Hmm. This regional liqueur acts like a potion. To drink potions, equip them in the inventory menu. I'm not going to drink that right now. I think I might actually want to sell that. That's valuable. But we could drink it. We've seen how that works. Just pick it up and put it on the paper doll there. What do we have here? An apprentice's lockpick with 25 uses and a quality of 1. Equip lockpicks in the inventory menu. Try picking the lock of the small chest on the shelf. Oh, really? Hmm. Small chest. Lock level 1. Hmm. It is locked indeed. Can't, uh, can't get in there. Morrowind is a little weird when it comes to lock picking and disarming traps. You've got to go into your inventory and find a lock pick or a probe. Pick it up like you would a weapon and equip it like you would a weapon. So now he is uh, armed with an apprentice's lock pick, which is very small. I can't get them. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. Well, never mind. The point is, uh, here, I, I'll, I'll just do the mouse there because these are the equipped items. They're surrounded in uh, border. But yeah, Apprentice's Lockpick. So now we press F and it is unsheathed, just like with the Iron Dagger. And that, <laughs> if you click, that's what it does. Beep. Boop. Right, let's go ahead and try to lockpick this small chest. Lockpick success. It worked. And we can see now that it has 24 uses instead of 25. I'm going to put the iron dagger back on. Because that's silly. And, nope, not tab. F. Okay. I, I think I've got some weird memories of other games and how to pull out your weapon and put it away. Oh gosh, that was Ultima, wasn't it? Ah, uh, I have to unlearn all the bad. <laughs> anyway, let's open this small chest. And inside, the reward is 31 gold. Cool, we'll take that. Uh, that doesn't hurt. We have a large Kwama egg here. We could take that as well, I suppose. And eat it. Large Kwama egg has no effect on you. Fine. And these are just flasks. I'm really not interested in those. I'm going to leave them. These are bottles. Matzah. Hmm. I'll take those. They're not very valuable, though. But they do something, and that could be interesting. Got a pewter candlestick. Not really worth anything. Some plates. Also not worth anything. There was a book called The Firmament. We'll read that in a moment. Hmm. What else do we have over here? These are pretty valuable, but I don't want to just loot everything. Hmm, this is pretty though. Silver candlestick. Equip lights and torches in the inventory menu. Lights and torches can only be used for a limited time before they burn out. Hmm. Let's equip it. 
Ah, and that put it in his offhand. I guess Fetter is right-handed. And we can see it even in uh, first-person mode. It is there, doesn't go away. And so now he is armed with a light source and an iron dagger. And now we're playing a weird game of Clue. It was Fetter Mock with the candlestick in the break room. Okay. <laughs> Let's put that away. We can just... There we go. And we can see it uh, got a little darker. Surprise. We've got some bread. We could take that. This is just, like, wax paper, I guess. More bread. And I imagine that paper is just there for sanitary purposes. We've got some baskets. Ooh. Crab meat, in case that first bite wasn't enough. Scrib jerky. And a small quama egg. We'll take all of that. How about this one? Uh, same stuff. Let's see if eating any of those does anything. Well, we could eat a bit of bread. Well, one. One bread. Bread has no effect on you. Darn. What about scrib jerky? Hmm, well that might have done something. Uh, don't know what though. And a, uh, we'll, we'll not eat another Kwama egg for right now. I think that's enough. I'm curious if that has had an effect on Fetter's alchemy skill. A little bit. See how it's 7 out of 100? By practicing your skills, you make progress towards increasing them. Yes. <laughs> Amazing, right? Uh, so he's uh, at uh, 7 out of 100 points to advance alchemy from 5 to 6. Now, unfortunately, because alchemy is not a major or minor skill for him, that will not contribute to his progress toward a level. But it'll make his alchemy better, so if we choose to use alchemy for any reason, that's handy. That's nice. Let's explore down here. Sturdy arched door. Hmm. Ah, see... This is what I would expect to be carrying around in my offhand if I wanted a light source. Got some buckets. Yeah, can't use anything over there. Ooh, more baskets. That's a cup with a value of one. I think I'll pass. Huh, that one too. But we've got a lot of sacks here. We could look in these. Kaguti hide. Sure, yeah. I'll take that. Nothing in that one. I, I think those are different sacks. No, I, I clicked the wrong stuff. That's okay. Uh, cork bulb root, green lichen, and stoneflower petals. Sure, we want all of that. And bitter green petals, netch leather, and scamp skin. Ew. Sure. Right. How about this one? Scathe Craw. Okay, and... More Netch Leather and uh, a Willow Anther. Fetter's got just this wonderful little collection of uh, miscellaneous stuff that he's building up. He's gonna eat all of it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Ooh, and a bedroll. Time for a nap. Beds can be used to rest in public buildings. Press T to rest when out in the wilderness. Hmm. We could rest. We're not going to. We don't need to. Fetter is feeling fine. Well, that was fun. Now, just so we're all aware, there's a lot of reading to do right here. I mean, a lot. Um, yeah, four books of this uh, brief history of the Empire. <laughs> we'll get to that later. I, I, don't, I don't want to do that right now. 
I really don't want to do that right now. I don't think there's anything else to read. Oh my, this limeware platter is uh, quite valuable. 650. Now that is relative. Um, as you'll see when we start speaking with merchants, they're not going to give you that exact 650. A lot of different factors play into how much money you can sell something for. I'm just admiring your stuff. Don't worry about it. But we will read the firmament because I mentioned that there was a book that went through the birth signs in great detail. Here it is. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. The Firmament by Fulki. The stars of Tamriel are divided into 13 constellations. Three of them are the major constellations, known as the Guardians. These are the Warrior, the Mage, and the Thief. Each of the Guardians protects its three charges from the 13th constellation, the Serpent. When the sun rises near one of the constellations, it is that constellation's season. Each constellation has a season of approximately one month. The serpent has no season, for it moves about in the heavens, usually threatening one of the other constellations. The Warrior The warrior is the first guardian constellation, and he protects his charges during their seasons. The warrior's own season is last seed, when his strength is needed for the harvest. His charges are the Lady, the Steed, and the Lord. Those born under the sign of the Warrior are skilled with weapons of all kinds, but prone to short tempers. The Mage The Mage is a guardian constellation whose season is Rain's Hand when Magicka was first used by men. His charges are the Apprentice, the Golem, and the Ritual. Those born under the mage have more magicka and talent for all kinds of spellcasting, but are often arrogant and absent-minded. The Thief The Thief is the last guardian constellation, and her season is the darkest month of Evening Star. Her charges are the Lover, the Shadow, and the Tower. Those born under the sign of the Thief are not typically thieves, though they take risks more often and only rarely come to harm. They will run out of luck eventually, however, and rarely live as long as those born under other signs. The Serpent The Serpent wanders about in the sky and has no season, though its motions are predictable to a degree. No characteristics are common to all who are born under the sign of the Serpent. Those born under this sign are the most blessed and the most cursed. The Lady The Lady is one of the warrior's charges, and her season is Heartfire. Those born under the sign of the Lady are kind and tolerant. The Steed The Steed is one of the warrior's charges, and her season is mid-year. Those born under the sign of the Steed are impatient and always hurrying from one place to another. The Lord The Lord's season is First Seed, and he oversees all of Tamriel during the planting. Those born under the sign of the Lord are stronger and healthier than those born under other signs. The Apprentice The Apprentice's season is Sun's Height. Those born under the sign of the Apprentice have a special affinity for magic of all kinds, but are more vulnerable to magic as well. The Atronach The Atronach, often called the Golem, is one of the mage's charges. Its season is Sun's Dusk. Those born under this sign are natural sorcerers with deep reserves of magicka, but they cannot generate magicka of their own. The Ritual the Ritual is one of the Mage's charges, and its season is Morning Star. Those born under this sign have a variety of abilities depending on the aspects of the Moons and the Divines. The Lover The Lover is one of the Thief's charges, and her season is Sun's Dawn. Those born under the sign of the Lover are graceful and passionate. The Shadow The Shadow's season is Second Seed. The shadow grants those born under her sign the ability to hide in shadows. The Tower The Tower is one of the Thief's charges, and its season is Frostfall. Those born under the sign of the Tower have a knack for finding gold and can open locks of all kinds. And there you have it. The birth signs in more detail, or lore mode at least, because we, we saw them in 
you know, here, here's what it'll do for your character specifically. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, but what, what's going on? Well, I think that's everything uh, that we want to explore in here for right now, so let's proceed to Satanine. Okay. You now have a map menu. It shows you the name of the place you are in and you are facing. You can see in the bottom right hand corner that indeed there is a mini map, which also serves as a compass. And we also have this map, which is wonderful. Let's take a look at the world. Oh my. So, uh, here Fetter is in Seda Neen. And this is Vardenfell. Pretty big place. What's that? Hmm. Okay. Looks good. We'll go back to local for right now. Let's check in the barrel. We're not gonna destroy it like the Avatar would. Ooh, what is this? Engraved Ring of Healing. Restore health one to five points on self when used. And it's got a charge. We'll see more about that kind of stuff later. But uh, basically this is a ring that, uh, it's, it's like a wand from Dungeons and Dragons, sort of. It's, it's, it's charged with healing magic in particular, and so if we were in a pinch and needed some really quick healing, we could use this engraved ring of healing and not use our own magicka reserves. Just use some of the charge here. I'm going to take that, and uh, I think I'll leave the pitchers, really. Cool. You now have a magic menu, where you can see all your powers, spells, and magic items. Like all menus, right-click to use your new menu. Click the spell or magic item you want to make your active magic. Press R to ready your active magic, then click to cast. And here we have that menu. Currently, nothing is selected. That's why that says none. But from here, we could say, hey, I want to cast Ancestor Guardian or Hearth Heal or use the engraved ring of healing. Doing so would use five out of the 20 points of charge that it has, meaning that we could cast from this ring four times before exhausting its charge and needing to recharge it with a soul gem, but we'll get to that later. Hearth heal, however, that's going to take 13 points of magicka out of our, hmm, not 74, that's interesting, we have 40. So I'm not... Ah, uh, yeah. Helps to read, right? Down here we were talking about this is the cost and this is the charge. As it says right there, this is cost versus chance, not charge. What that means is that there is a 74% chance that the cast will be successful. Yes, it can fail. Yikes. That's why it's uh, helpful to have your uh, magic skills be pretty high because that will increase the chance of success and it will lower the cost as well. I'm going to go ahead and ready Hearth Heal. So you can see down here, now that is what is selected before it wasn't. Can I unselect? No, not really. Hmm. We also have uh, things that are currently happening to Fetter. So if we see this, this is Resist Fire. That's always on because he is a Dark Elf. And we can see that that comes from... Um, no, we can't. It's not in here. Nor there. Hmm. All right, that's fine. But it is here. So there's that. And then Fortify Attribute. This is where Lady's Favor and Lady's Grace, the uh, the birth sign for the, the lady, that's where that comes in. That permanent 25 points for both personality and endurance. Always there. 
You can see your status effects down here, but uh, you've got to memorize these strange looking icons to really get much out of that when you're just running around. Typically the light blue stuff or the white stuff is good, positive. Red is, uh-oh, you've got a status ailment. You're going to want to deal with that. A lot of spells, whether they're good or bad, will wear off on their own. I think Hearth Heal might be on for a moment, then it wears off. I'm not sure. But of course, the ones that indicate a duration, they wear off once that has elapsed. Okay, anyway, so that is equipped. I don't need to cast it right now, so I'm not going to. But if I were to press R, Fetter puts his hands out. This is the I'm ready to cast indicator. Yes, he is walking around like this. Yeah. It's uh, maybe a little goofy, but um, these hands are registered weapons in the district of Vardenfell. Don't make me angry. I'll heal myself. I'll do it. We'll put those away and pull out the uh, dagger and put, put that away too. I pressed F instead of R, so out came the dagger. Let's head inside again to the Census and Excise office. Press E to talk to the captain. Select topics to ask about them. Don't try persuasion on him. If you're not good at it, he will start to dislike you. Ooh, that sounds risky. Definitely don't want that. Ah, it's Celis Gravius. Hello, before I speak with you, I just want to look around. I like looking around. Got some folded cloth. Your papers, please. I, I will. I will. Don't worry, comrade. And well, those those could sell for a bit, but I'm not going to pinch them with this fella standing right there. The rest of this stuff, eh, not terribly interested. But that, that I am interested in. I just don't want to do it right now. I would like to be able to quick save first and uh, we won't be able to do that until we're done speaking with him and have gone through that door so that might be <clears throat> a bit later yeah i know okay just being awkward just i'm just i'm not casing the place or anything let's talk to salus gravius first let me take your identification papers thank you word of your arrival only reached me yesterday i am salus gravius but my background is not important I'm here to welcome you to Morrowind. Release identification has been removed from your inventory. He meant it when he said your papers, please. What is your background, Celis? I am Celis Gravius and Knight Errant of the Imperial Legion. Okay. So yeah, tell me about Morrowind. This is the dialogue interface. You can click things in the middle of it, or you can see this nice uh, list, and this is going to get long as we uh, proceed through the game. Uh, just These are topics that you can always ask somebody about. Different people have different topics. So we could click Morrowind here or here, get the same result. There's also this persuasion area. Now you can see his disposition towards Fetter is 52 out of 100. So he's kind of like, not sure about this weird dark elf standing in front of him who's been kind of creeping around looking at things. But he doesn't hate him or anything, it's just, it's neutral. As far as he's concerned right now, Fetter is just another random Dunmer. We could try to make him like Fetter more. You have some options. You can admire, intimidate, taunt, or bribe if you've got the money for it. We've only got enough for a very small bribe. I'm not gonna do it. There is simply no need, and the risk is too high that it might go south, and he will start to not like Fetter, and I don't really want that right now. At least, not until I've got the option to save and reload. And I'll probably be doing that a lot, because things can go very badly very quickly in Morrowind, and it can kind of catch you off guard. So being able to reload from before you made your stupid mistake is um, invaluable. Anyway, let's ask about Morrowind. Yes, you're in Morrowind. I don't know why you're here, or why you were released from prison and shipped here. But your authorization comes directly from Emperor Uriel Septim VII himself, and I don't need to know any more than that. When you leave this office, you're a free man. 
But before you go, I have instructions on your duties. Instructions from the Emperor. So pay careful attention. Hmm. Uriel Septim, huh? Yes, Uriel Septim is still the Emperor. According to my instructions, he personally authorized your release from prison and your delivery here. It's all very mysterious, but that's the way the Empire works. Silence. Secrecy. Let not the left hand know what the right hand is doing. The Empire? Yes, of course this is the Empire. This is Vardenfeld District of the province of Morrowind, and Morrowind has been part of the Empire for over 400 years. The current Emperor is Uriel Septim, 24th of the Septim line. You haven't been in prison that long, have you? Nothing wrong with your head, is there? The men said you were acting a little strange when they brought you in from the ship. Hmm. Well, yes. My dreams are none of your business, sir. Let's see, we've, we've heard about all of this now. So I guess we want to ask about our duties. This package came with the news of your arrival. You are to take it to Caius Cosades in the town of Balmora. Go to the Southwall Corner Club and ask for Caius Cosades. They'll know where to find him. Serve him as you would serve the Emperor himself. I also have a letter for you and a dispersal to your name. Ooh, money. That's good. Your journal has been updated. Directions to Caius Cosades has been added to your inventory. Package for Caius Cosades has been added to your inventory. 87 gold has been added to your inventory. Good monies. Let's see. Let's ask about Caius Cosades. Report to Caius Cosades in Balmora. I can't tell you where to find him, but you are to go to the South Wall Corner Club and ask for him. Someone there can direct you to him. What about Balmora? Balmora is north of Sedanin. The road passes Pelagiad Village and Fort Pelagiad, crosses a deep ravine, passes Fort Moonmoth, then turns west across the Odai River and into Balmora. The Southwall Corner Club is in southeast Balmora, on the east side of the river. For more detailed directions, talk to Alone the Scout at Ariel's Trade House here in Sedanin. But take my advice. You're new here. Take the Silt Strider to Balmora. Fast, cheap, safe. Cross the bridge and head east. Can't miss it. Hmm. Why, thank you. Let's ask about his trade before we end the conversation. I am a knight errant of the Order of Ebonheart and an imperial emissary attached to the Census and Excise Office here in Sedanin. Okay. Well, uh, goodbye, Salisgravius. <laughs> right. Uh, and we've got a little more money now because of that. And we've got uh, directions to Caius Cosades. Let's take a look at that. Fetter Mock, you have been given these directions and a package of documents. Do not show them to anyone. Do not attempt to read the documents in the package. The package has been sealed, and your tampering will be discovered and punished. Follow these directions. Proceed to the town of Balmora in Vardenfeld District. Report to a man named Caius Cosades. He will be your superior and patron. You will follow his orders. His residence is not known, but ask at the corner club called Southwall. People there will know where to find Caius Cosades. When you report to Caius Cosades, deliver the package of documents to him and wait for further orders. Remember, you owe your life and freedom to the Emperor. Serve him well, and you will be rewarded. Betray him, and you will suffer the fate of all traitors. I have the honor to prepare this at the direction of His Most Sovereign Majesty, the Emperor Uriel Septim. Glabrio Bellinus, personal secretary to the Emperor. Wow, it's pretty bougie. And we've got a package for Caius Cosades. I'm not going to uh, open that, at least not before saving. Because I, I, I don't know if dragging it over will be like, hey, are you sure you want to open this? It's sealed. Or if it'll just open it. Because, like I said, things can go very badly, very quickly in Morrowind. You really want the ability to save before trying stupid things. But okay, cool. Cool, cool. Close your mouth. Yeah. Right, well, um... Time to go. Press J to use your journal and review what you've been told. 
you should probably check out Ariel's trade house up on the left. You're on your own now. Good luck. Sniff, sniff. Yes, uh, Fetter is on his own now. That's it. There is no more hand-holding. Just uh, thrown out into the wide world of Morrowind to figure out what's next. But the really good news is that we can save, which we'll do after checking the journal. 16th of Last Seed, Day 1. My orders are to go to the town of Balmora in Vardenfell District and report to a man named Caius Cosades. To find out where he lives, I should ask in Balmora at the corner club called Southwall. When I find Caius Cosades, I must give him a package of documents and wait for further orders. All right. Let's go ahead and save. Yes, yes, yes. New save game. And this would be... Oh, the num keypad is not working. All right, we'll have to do it old school. And that is saved. We'll head back in there to try to swipe that key in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. I'm listening. Oh, are you? I. Okay, well, I'm a little uh, grossed out, but. Um, we will be back in the next video, nonetheless. See ya.